Hey everyone, welcome back. My name is Lynn Wilson and welcome to my kitchen. So today we're gonna to be talking about what can we stockpile when it comes to condiments? Should you stockpile condiments? If so, what would you put in your pantry stockpile and what do you use it for and all that good stuff? So I thought I would take you along, let you see some of the things that I have, how I use them, and this is an open discussion. Um, there are going to be things that you're going to say, Lynn, I would never have that in my stockpile. And then there's gonna be things that you're gonna say, Lynn, why aren't you stockpiling this? You know, certain things, apologize, the oven is coming up to temp. Um, I am, I'll take a little detour there. I am making some banana muffins. We are going on a bus trip tomorrow and I'm making banana muffins and oatmeal bars. It's a new banana muffin recipe. I'll take you along for that and show you that in a couple days. And I'm also making oatmeal bars, which is a brand new recipe to me, but it is a recipe from friends of mine who are YouTubers. I'll share that with you later. We have uh, chicken in here making beef broth in the crock pot. I'm gonna come back and talk to you about this and these items up here as well. but. Getting back to the condiments, condiments are a very personal thing in the sense that it's your taste buds and the style of cooking that you do. Where I just did a uh, video on the spices that you stockpile and the basic ones that I would recommend, like onion powder, garlic powder, you can go back and see that. But when it comes to condiments, everybody's very different in the way they cook, the style they cook, the seasonings they like and all that. So I'm going to show you what I have. I have a turntable. I'm gonna bring it down in a moment and let you see this. Turntable cabinet, uh, counter, under my counter. What am I trying to say? A turntable kitchen cabinet on the lower end. So I'm actually sitting on a very low stool so I can show that to you. And um, I'll show you everything in here and I'll explain a few things let you know if I'm missing anything, so on and so forth. I did want to jump up here real quick. New purchase for me, this is a rice cooker. I have seen and heard a lot of people using rice cookers and it's probably for years I have wanted one and I kept talking myself out of it. I don't know if it's worth it. If I see one at a thrift store, I'm talking probably for the last five years I've wanted a rice cooker. So, we were at a thrift store and it was $5. And I was like, uh, should I do it? Should I not do it? If it's $15 for a new one, $10 to, $10 to $15 for a new one, and I get a used one and it doesn't work right and it doesn't come with the book. And I decided, you know what? I'm going to get a new one because if I don't like it after I use it a few times, I could send it back. So, I used it and I made rice. The other night we had company, we had tacos, and I made rice in here. It was done in 10 minutes, and it was the perfect rice. I mean, to perfection. Now, I've made it in the microwave for years. I very, I think when I first got married 35 years ago, I did it on the stovetop. It never comes out right. Learned how to make it in the microwave, and it came out pretty good. It was decent. We're not big rice eaters. Like we'll do a rice a but not a white rice or anything like that. And definitely not brown rice. And then I learned how to make it in the Instant Pot, which comes out quite well. But we're a family of three and most times only two of us are eating it. I have a huge, I don't even know what size. I have the largest Instant Pot. And I had bought that for myself years ago and that's when we had a larger family and I was doing big bulk cooking. So at this point, I don't need an Instant Pot that big. I really would love to get a smaller one and maybe sell that one on Facebook Marketplace. But in the meantime, I have the big one. But I got this and I wanted to try it. I don't know if you can see this. There's a light. There's a little spot here for a light. This will be when you plug it in, this comes on. Then you just tap this button down and it turns it on. And then when it's done, it goes to this light and it tells you it's on warm. So I made the rice, it was perfect. 
The next day I made oatmeal. Oatmeal, yeah, in the rice cooker. It was perfect. So I'm gonna bring you along and show that to you. I'm gonna make the rice and make the oatmeal and probably do some hard boiled eggs also, just to let you see it, if you're interested in seeing how a rice cake cooker works. But it said you can make noodles, you can make soups, stews, you can make pancakes. I'm guessing it's like the German pancakes that puff up. I'll have to find out. You can make hard boiled eggs in here. So I think I'm leaning more toward using this instead of my Instant Pot because my Instant Pot, as much as I love it and I do love it, it's huge, it's big, it's heavy. And I think this is more my style now along with my crock pot. So that's what I'm thinking. Um, I also made tonight, and you'll see that on a different recipe, we're using um, pantry meals for this week, only eating out of the pantry, just using up what we have. And I have, it's a long story, but I have a ton of hamburger rolls, like a ton, we'll never eat them all. So I decided to do a meal tonight, make some garlic toast, and I used a little garlic powder and butter, and I've never done that before. First time, I see people doing it all the time, and I brushed it on. And then I have this cheesy seasoning blend that I got from Trader Joe's. And if you saw my spice cabinet the other day on my video, I had this and I didn't know what to use it for. And it says great for vegetables, pasta, and popcorn. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to put that on the garlic bread. Oh, it was the best. So, 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 so good. So that's in an up and coming video. So let me bring you um, these two up here, by the way. If you saw the video the other night on my food swap, these are two items that were in the food swap that need to go into this cabinet. But I wanted to show you that, you know, I do refill this and so on and so forth. So let me bring you down, let you see the cabinet, and I'll walk you through what we have. In here, what I have are some vinegars. I have red wine vinegar. I have balsamic vinegar. I have grapeseed oil. Um, I don't even know all what I have here. Let's see more red wine vinegar. Okay, so then I have apple cider vinegar. I love using this to make buttermilk. And then I have coconut oil. And then I have some vegetable oil. I have several of those, they were gifted to me. I have olive oil. Now usually, this is a brand new one. I had a second one, but I put it in one of those jars that you can pour out. So right now I'm down to one. I have three or four, I have this little one and one, two, three big ones. And if you saw my food swap the other day, I got another one and that's why I'm giving that one away. I will not use that up in enough time before they expire and oil can get funny. I have bone broth down here, beef broth. I have different containers of broth. I do like to keep these on hand for a quick soup. I did recommend in my spice cabinet tour that we did what's a stock stockpile. I recommended some bouillon but I do like to keep some of those. Some of these are gifted to me. So I have some odd cans of it as well. Down here, what do I have stockpiled? I have mayonnaise and I have some Miracle Whip for doing salads. And this was something I got as a free gift, mayo with avocado oil. I don't know how we're going to like it, but it was a free gift when I did Thrive Market. So we have that, extra mayonnaise here. Then down here I have salad dressings. I have ranch back there, and then I have mustard, and our honey mustard, and more ranch here. My son adores the ranch, so we keep quite a bit of that on hand. And then I have my, whoop, my extra sprays, olive oil spray. I keep the regular spray, and I keep the butter flavored. I like to keep those on hand, so they're down here. And what I do is when I'm going shopping, I have a list of all the things that I like to keep on hand and I just check them off and I see what I need. And I do have a couple of these honey mustards up here because I could not fit them down here, but it looks like I can maybe, let's see if we can get them all down here because I would prefer them to be down there, but no, that's gonna be too squishy. So we'll just put one there for now. And then, well, let's start at this side here. Let's bring you back up. Okay, so over here, this is just a flavored buttered uh, packet that I got with Thrive Market popcorn, and I didn't use this one, so I kept that. 
but I keep my butter spray, my regular spray is here, and then my olive oil spray is here. And then I have cream soups. So cream soups are some things that I would use for making soups or different recipes for different side dishes and so on. I have some sauerkraut and I like to, I got extra rice in here left over from the other night that must have fell out. I have sauerkraut. I did, I bought this one. I will tell you the regular sauerkraut at great value I like. I had bought this one, it's called Crispy Sauerkraut by Libby's and they didn't have this when I went to get sauerkraut originally. And so I purchased this one. I don't really like it. I will use it in something where there's a lot of extra meat and things like a pork recipe, but to put it on hot dogs or something, I did not like it. I like to keep a queso cheese like this for different recipes. I have some chia seeds for different recipes up and coming. One of the things I'll be using this for is I'm making that banana bread and I'm also making oatmeal bars and I'm going to add this to it just to give it extra vitamins. This is where I keep sort of the overflow of anything that belongs down there, ketchup and spicy brown mustard. Then turning this around, I have some salsa and I had two jars. I went through one of them this weekend with our tacos. Picked this up at the Dollar Tree. It was just a little mustard. I thought it was so cute in this jar of French's. So I have that. I have one in the refrigerator and this is my extra. I have an extra jar of pickles here. I have one jar of pickles in the refrigerator. And again, this would be the extra. I have some olives here. I just used the jar of olives up the other night for a recipe. So this one will eventually be in the refrigerator probably next week. I have a tuna bake casserole I'm gonna try and you put green olives in it. And I love green olives, so I'm gonna be putting that in there. I usually have black olives. I am out. I used them for tacos the other night. We don't use them too often, so I'm not concerned that I don't have extra in my stockpile. That is not something I use often enough to be concerned about it. Then I have an extra jar of, these are sandwich uh, pickles. If you wanna you know, make a sub or something like that, they were gifted to me. Then back here, we have oyster flavored sauce and I have some soy sauce back there. I just keep my regular salt and pepper here. Let me move that up. I have G butter. I don't know if you get this. This will never expire. This is good forever. And um, even though they put a use a Best Buy date on here, it's clarified butter, it's good forever. So I have two of those, three of those. This one I got from Thrive Market and it has Himalayan pink salt in it. And it's it says grass fed. Um, so that's an extra one I got from Thrive Market. And then I have these two. I like to use these for when I'm doing sauteing and it's just handy, it's quick. I'd rather use something like that for when I'm doing my cooking than my regular stick butter. I'll keep that for everyday use. I keep my baking powder and I keep my baking soda um, in here because I do a lot of baking and it's just easier than me having to walk on the other side of my kitchen is where my baking cabinet is. Plain salt, I have some kosher salt and turkey gravy a jus gravy. You can see all the crumbs are on top of these. Oh, I'm so sorry about that. But um, this is always being opened and closed constantly because we are cooking right above here. My stove is here, my sink is here, and this is the cabinet area that I cook on. More beef gravy, of course. Every good kitchen must have a jar of Marmite. The Marmite is one of my secrets to so many of my recipes. Let me move these out of the way. And then I have some other oddball things like a package of chicken gravy. And this is another package of chicken gravy. And then this is roasted chicken gravy. Some of these things I get for like 25 cents at the discount store. These are crispy onions. I bought those to put on, you know, it says down here, salads, mashed potatoes, burgers. So I have a couple of ideas with recipes I wanna try them on. So I have those. Another two things, highly, highly recommend 
is their gravy granules bisto i have the chicken flavor and i have the beef flavor out of the two of these if i can only pick one i know last week i told you when i did my stockpile for spices if you're going to get bouillon i'd only go with the chicken if you could only get one because it's more versatile this i would go with the beef only because i think the flavor is better then I have this lock and lock container here filled with goodies. So let me show you this one. I have it in a sandwich bag, as you can see. This is from Thrive Market, and it is fajita seasoning mix. When I purchased these, someone else recommended them. Uh, see Mindy Mom. I don't know if you watch her. I love her recipes. This is such a strong smelling packet. And I was a little hesitant thinking, oh no, it's going to be so spicy and so hot to the tongue. And I was nervous that my son does not like anything with spice. And they're so strong smelling. I keep smelling the packet. But it does not have a milk base in it. And I was making dinner for a relative the other night. And they cannot have any milk products. And the taco seasoning mix had a milk product in it. So I opted for this because it did not. They went crazy. I did chicken tacos and I did beef tacos and I used this instead of taco seasoning. Let me tell you, my family went crazy over it. Everybody loved it and ate a ton. And I got, how many packets did we get? One, two, three, four. I guess I only got four packets in the order that I got. And then tonight, I was making spaghetti sauce, meat sauce, and a friend of mine who always used to bring food to work for us would put in taco seasoning in her chopped meat and then add the tomato sauce when she makes spaghetti and it was so delicious. I'd never heard of anyone doing that. So I decided to try and add the fajita seasoning to the meat. Then I added the tomato sauce and we had spaghetti with that. This was so stinking delicious. I definitely am putting that on my reorder for Thrive. I had used a little bit of the chili seasoning out of here, so I put that in a Ziploc bag. So here's some of the other things I keep on hand. The typical onion soup mix, I keep those on hand. Store brand, regular brand, sorry about that. I like to keep the vegetable soup mix. I prefer the Noor. I know you can get store brand. I prefer this. I make spinach um, dip quite often. So let me just pull out some of the other things I have in here, give you an idea. I have the taco seasoning mix. I have a shepherd's pie mix. I have another taco. Taco. I have ranch packets. Another ranch. We have fried rice. My son loves fried rice, so I had bought these on Amazon. I have the Italian seasoning where you mix it with the oil and vinegar. That's good for a marinade. I have chicken casserole. Now this one and this one, the Coleman's, come in the international section in our area at the Stop and Shop. And these are British packets so of seasonings. And then I have a jus gravy, noir, another au jus, an onion gravy. You had seen that maybe in my haul a while ago. I haven't used that yet. This is crock pot beef stew. I like keeping these things on hand because you can always flavor the things up. As you gravy again, I might just add this if I'm doing a stock and I want to flavor the soup up to be a little bit nicer. You can do that or you can make a gravy out of it. And then I have the ham flavored. This really should go up with my spices, but this is good to use in a rice and... Um, Take me to Tammy's house. My friend Tammy had recommended this on one of her hauls. So I haven't tried this yet, but I did pick this up. So that's what I have in here. You can see I have a variety of these things. I like having all this on hand. You never know when you're making a meal. You have a little bit of chopped meat left and you want to make a shepherd's pie. You just want to, you know, marinate something. Condiments are a big thing ketchup mustard mayonnaise i would say they're probably the basic ones that most of us if we're thinking about 
what condiments we want to keep on hand. You're just starting a pantry. You're not sure what to keep on hand. They're probably going to be the ones that you're going to have all the, all the time. Your mayonnaise, your mustards. You might have a regular mustard. You might want to have a spicy mustard. Um, you know, you can see what you feel is best to have on hand. But for me, I like to have a lot of variety from everything from soy sauce to olives, to pickles, to salad dressings, to different oils, to different uh, vinegars. I think all of that makes a difference. Okay, so that's what I have in my uh, condiment turntable stockpile. Now in the refrigerator, I have general chow sauce. I have soy sauce. I have ketchup and mayonnaise and pickles and olives and, oh, I don't know what else some other odds and ends. I'll be doing another tour of my refrigerator soon. Let's just see what I have in there. I have butter in there. I have, you know, the things that we've opened. This is more of what I'm stockpiling. These are the extras that I like to have in there. Another thing I like to keep on hand is, I call it the fake cheese. This is by Ragu. And this one is, a, it's made with real cheese, double cheddar sauce. So I've never tried the ragu one. I thought I was ordering those little packets that you can get. I usually get the Velveeta packets. And I ordered this online from walmart.com and it, I didn't realize it was in a container like this. So I was using pantry leftover. I had leftover hot dogs from the other night for dinner. So I made a quick throw together lunch today. So I decided to try this. It is very good. Um, but it is a lot more milder than if you were to get the Velveeta cheese. If you get the Velveeta, it's a much richer, thicker, creamier. This is a little bit more watery. And again, it tastes good. It's just, uh, if you're going, if you're looking for that thicker cheese, this is not. This is great. I think if you're doing more of a sauce versus like a hearty mac and cheese. But I only used half of it, so I'm going to put the rest of this in the freezer, save that for another time. Right now, that was in my turntable stockpile of condiments, but I did use it up. So I'm going to put this one in the freezer, and probably what I will do on one of my next orders when I'm doing stockpile refills, I will get a couple of those Velveeta packets. They're like a dollar each, and they are great for a quick throw together. Get a box of elbow macaroni and cheese, add that to it. If you really want to make it really nice, you use that and then get a can of stewed tomatoes. And I take the stewed tomatoes and I chop it down really good so it's almost like a sauce. But if you add stewed tomatoes to your macaroni and cheese, mwah, it's so good. And it brings it up a notch a little bit healthier for you. So that's what I have tonight on my stockpile for condiments. Is there something in terms of a condiment that you like to keep? Now, a lot of times I'll have Italian salad dressing in here. I don't have that. I use that up for a recipe. I had a Olive Garden salad dressing and I used that for a pasta salad last night. So that other half of the bottle that I did not use is now in the refrigerator. Those things, if I'm going to make a recipe, I'll keep them because sometimes I just don't use them for months and months and months. And to me, condiments are those extra things. You don't necessarily need ketchup. You don't need mayonnaise. Those things you don't need. You can just have a plain burger, but they're nice. They add flavor. They add a little extra taste if you're going to make a meatloaf with the ketchup and all that. So what other things do you keep in your condiments in your stockpile? Do you stockpile condiments? Do you just buy enough to keep in the refrigerator? Do you keep extra on hand? I'd love to hear from you. I know I'm behind on my comments. I'm get, I'll am i be getting caught up. Life is just really busy right now, so I'm grateful that I can get a video out to you guys, but I still love to hear from you, and I will be responding. So we'll just gonna, I'm gonna put all this stuff away, and I'll catch you all on the next video.